Your dog is suddenly limping on one of her rear legs. She's been diagnosed with an ACL or anterior cruciate ligament injury. Can you heal your dog without surgery? Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications. Then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Your dog's been running after a ball, all of a sudden comes up acutely lame on one of her rear legs. ACL or this anterior cruciate ligament injury in dogs, it is very, very common. And what the cruciate ligament does is provide primary stability within the knee. So the main test to see if the ACL ligament has been injured is you're gonna have your veterinarian is gonna be firmly anchoring the upper bone, the femur. They're gonna then firmly hang on to the lower bone, the tibia, and they're gonna see if they can get cranial motion of the tibia moving forward in relation to the femur, the knee. As you can see in Tula's knee here, there is virtually no motion. She's got a nice, strong, intact ACL. But her, if her ACL was damaged, you get cranial motion of the tibia in relation to the femur. It's called the drawer sign. Does your dog need surgery? If you're dealing with a dog that is 30 pounds and more, the majority of times surgery is preferred. Of course, there's a bunch of caveats here that depends on the experience of the surgeon. You know, what type of surgical technique. If your dog is 30 pounds and less, as is little Tula, especially if your dog has been diagnosed with a partial tear or they haven't fully torn the ACL, then there's a really good chance that with conservative treatment, which means rest, that means appropriate anti-inflammatories, that means specific physio techniques that we're gonna discuss, that your dog can heal without surgery. But not everybody can afford surgery. Uh, there may be other complications. Maybe your dog isn't a good surgical candidate. But I do wanna emphasize the point, if you've got a dog that's more than 30 pounds, they're quite active, they're young, maybe they've got a full ACL tear, clearly surgery is ideal. You're choosing not to have surgery, here are my suggested steps. We're gonna discuss this over a 16 week or four month period. We're starting with week one. Week one is decreasing the inflammation, giving your dog great pain control, keeping them well confined. Before we do anything, we want all the swelling to go down within this injured knee. Getting your dog on pain medication. You know, it could be Meloxicam or Medicam from your veterinarian. Some holistic anti-inflammatory, CBD, cannabidiol, 95% curcumin, topical liquid DMSO. I really like using this topically as well and I used to use this in the veterinary practice. And then probably the most underrated yet really effective way to provide pain relief, ice. Get yourself some of these inexpensive gel ice packs and you just put that along the inside, the outside of your dog's knee, and just hold that. Hold that on there for a minimum of five minutes twice a day. I, ideally, you're doing that upwards of four times a day. The main principle during that first week is decreasing the pain and swelling. You want your dog confined to a small space. They need to be going outside, going to the bathroom, but they're gonna be on a leash the entire time. And your dog, they may also need to be supported with a towel. Just wrap the towel underneath your dog you can kind of use it to kind of hike them along as they're going outside to go to the bathroom, then back out inside confined in their dog bed. Next, I want you to go ahead and order an ACL brace. This here is the ortho dog brace. Here's an example. I, we actually ordered it for my brother's dog, Heather, who'd injured her ACL. Your dog is gonna be using this brace for the next four to six months, and it's only gonna be taken off when we're doing specific physio exercises. During week two, we're starting with passive range of motion exercises along with the massage. First, the massage. Your dog has one of the legs hiked up. By holding that leg up, they're putting a whole lot of force in their quadriceps. Just imagine with yourself continually walking with all your weight on your left leg, holding your right leg up, right? Your whole quads are activated. Keep that leg raised. So you really want to do some gentle massage of the big muscles along here. These are the quadriceps. These four muscle bodies and that extend from the hip down toward the knee. Right? Some passive range of motion. We're gonna be flexing and extending the joints. We're gonna be doing 10 to 15 reps. So let's start here with the knee joint here. So I'm supporting Tula's knee with my left hand. I've got holding up her hawk with my right hand. So I'm going to extend her knee slowly. Hold that for five seconds. Right, put it into a neutral position, hold that for five seconds. Then I'm gonna fully flex that knee. Hold that for five seconds. Okay, how's that? There's one rep. 
Let's extend that, hold that for five seconds, into a neutral position for five seconds. There, there we go, we're gonna fully flex that and hold that for five seconds. This can also be done for your dog's hock joint. It's the joint below the knee here, well with the hip joint. You can just sort of, let's just extend that hip joint. Oh, let's flex it in. You're gonna be doing 10 to 15 reps of those. You're gonna be doing that at least twice a day. Then after you've done that, you've created more inflammation again. You've moved that joint around. So just get out your ice pack, just ice that knee again. So during this time, you're gonna to start to increase the amount that you're walking your dog, but just by adding five minutes a week. So week two, you're up to 10 minutes four times a day. Week three, you're up to 15 minutes four times a day. Week four, you're up to 20 minutes four times a day. And while you are walking your dog, they're gonna be on a leash, they're fully leashed. You're generally walking them on pretty flat surfaces, stuff that doesn't involve rocks, it's easy walking surfaces. The biggest thing you're trying to avoid is that sudden stop and start, because that's how they injured the leg in the first place. They're running after a squirrel, they stopped all of a sudden, they put all these forces on the knee and that's what popped the ACL in the first place. And in between the physio exercises, your dog isn't gonna be having that splint on. Now we're on week five to six. Week five, we're incorporating longer leash walks, upwards of 30 minutes, up to four times a day. We're still always using a leash. We have full control of your dog. So we're incorporating some standing weight-bearing exercises. We want to intentionally get your dog to, to put some more force on that leg to start to really use uh, that injured knee. First, the sit to stand exercise. You start with your dog standing. You get them to sit. Go girl, can you sit? Go girl. So they sit, and then you get them to stand. Go girl, come here too. Can you stand again? Go girl. The idea here is your dog has to lift up, putting a little bit of force using that knee to get up, because they're going from a, a sitting position up to a standing position. Next, you can try the three-legged standing exercise. So you get your dog standing. You're then gonna hold up one of the legs. The third standing weight-bearing exercise, you're gonna have your dog standing. You're gonna gently support either side of their hips, but you're gonna gently push from one side, because Tula's got more of her weight on her left leg, that's her good leg. Gently forcing a little bit of pressure, have her like slightly lift up the left leg, and she's gotta then put force onto the right leg. Start out with small numbers of those exercises, three repetitions twice a day. You're gonna continue with those weight-bearing exercises week five, six, seven, and eight, and you can slowly increase the number of repetitions, right? You're starting out with three to five. You can easily increase that up to 20 by week eight. You can slowly then increase the amount of time you're walking your dog. You're adding in about five minutes uh, per week, right? Between week six and week seven, then you're gonna to start to incorporate a slight incline. And as you can see, when she's standing up on this little ramp, she's gotta put more force in her rear legs. And that's the idea, we're gonna slowly increase the amount of forces that are applied to that leg that's been injured. She can slowly start to use the muscles in that leg again, slowly getting her stronger. But you can also see we're doing it gradually. We're not just taking her from, you know, a, a knee ligament injury to trying to do stairs. Week seven to eight, now we're incorporating a bit more speed. Maybe we're gonna get your dog up to a little bit of a slow trot. Let's go a little Tula. Your dog walking upwards of 30 minutes, upwards of four times a day. As well, I want you to seek out some steeper areas. We want to incorporate more going up, more going down. The other point I need to make is through this entire time, you can still be doing the passive range of motion exercises. Also those weight bearing exercises. By the end of week eight, your dog could be doing upwards of 30 sit stands twice a day. Now we are into week number nine. What's new here? Now you want to get your dog to start swimming. You want this to be a place where your dog can get a nice, soft, gradual entry into the water. They don't have to navigate rocks, etc. Start, you know, getting them out there for up to five minutes twice a day. So between eight to 16 weeks, now you're increasing the amount of time that you're walking your dog. You're still adding about five minutes per week. Right, you're still using a leash at controlled amounts. I always encourage a leash primarily because the last thing you want is your dog like tearing after a squirrel, then he blows all that good work you've done. But it may mean you're gonna have to be running a bit with your dog. So we do wanna to start to get your dog increasing the amount of time, the amount of force that they're putting on that knee, but in a really good controlled way. Week eight to week 16, you're still you know, flexing, extending your dog's knee. 
you're still doing those passive range of motion exercises, you're still doing those standing weight bearing exercises. With some of the dogs, by the time we're getting to sort of 10 weeks, we can start out with lifting two legs up, right? Then based on the time of the year, and if you live in an area where you've got access to water, swimming is great. If you can then get your dog into the water, you know, ideally once a day, twice a day would be awesome. Where they can go through, support themselves while they're in that water, flex and extend that knee. It's such a good, good form of therapy for dogs that have had any type of knee injury. By the end of all that, you've gone the full four months, then you have a really good chance of having a dog that can have a healed, supportive knee without having had surgery. I just want to reinforce some of the big principles. Just make sure your dog has good pain control. Like just get yourself a bunch of ice packs, you know, regularly use this. If your dog is in pain, like get them an anti-inflammatory like Medicam. You need to get a knee brace. For that entire period of time, your dog needs to be controlled. He needs to be on a leash. The physio is really important. Of all the ones I just discussed, I really think the passive range of motion exercises is the easiest to do, and they seem to give the best result. In my experience, dogs that can get access to water, that can have uh, physiotherapy in a pool, that really can make a big difference of whether or not they can heal without surgery or not. If you don't have access to water, right, you can start to incorporate some of the same, you know, healing mechanisms that would happen in the water. You're getting your dog to walk up inclines. Will your dog heal without surgery? I don't know, right? And every dog is, is very unique. They're very much an individual. But that being said, I've seen hundreds of dogs heal without surgery. Right? And that very well could be your dog. Thanks for watching, you guys. Tula is really glad this is over. It's Dr. Jones.